Hi guys, today we will be discussing a little about Chainlink. Uh, I have received a few queries about how to connect uh, different APIs uh, to your smart contracts, how to extract data from these different uh, APIs in your Chainlink uh, in your Solidity smart contract. So we will be using Chainlink for that connection. So if you go on the Chainlink website here, you will see Chainlink provides a lot of solutions for the same. So we can just click on develop with Chainlink or start building and here in the documentation it can give you different types of feeds the data feeds different functionalities automate in the different contracts and this is what we will be looking into external apis so external api calls are what we are going to work with and in this also you can get multiple types of responses as they mentioned here we'll stick with single word response and we'll be getting a response out of that so this is what we are going to get here if you see it has multiple types of data that you can get now uh, like this single word response that we are getting here uh, you can get a multivariable response a array and a large response a multivariable response is wherein the same url uh, the same contract you need multiple things extracted like for example here this url that is there is going to give you the price of ETH in Bitcoin. Similarly, we want the same in the US dollar or in other parameters. Then we can change it like for example, ETH in Bitcoin, ETH in USD, ETH in Euros. So all of these different prices can be got using a single request. So either you want, you can go ahead for a single word response wherein you get only, uh, you get a JSON like this out of which you extract some data so in this example that they have stated they have extracted this data here so this is their smart contract so what exactly they are doing is they are giving uh, so these details are already pre-filled you don't need to worry too much about it but this job id I'll, I'll explain a little bit more on that when we actually do it practically but overall if you see what they are doing here is they are going to this api so if i just copy this api and I paste it here so here you're getting this kind of an information so this is a big set of data but we don't want all the details what we want here is we just want one parameter which is this volume 24 hour volume for this particular trade so if you look at this uh, it's very unorganized there we can look at it here so this is basically the structure that we are getting in return and this is the data that we want to extract the uh, here so this is what is the response that we are getting in the raw format like this in this we want the 24 hour volume so i think it's this volume r specified volume 24 hour so here we must have that parameter somewhere volume 24 so here this is the parameter so we are getting this so what we need to exactly specify is the path to reach this variable so it is in this json format of a raw inside raw in eth in eth in us dollar in us dollar we are not even looking at type we are not looking at market and so on we are take, getting to ta24 hours so that's what is specified here in the path parameter so here we are getting a type of request is get this is the url and the json that we are getting this is the exact path that we want raw eth and in us dollar 24 hour. so this is what i showed you raw eth us dollar and in that 24 hour so in this way they are trying to extract uh, the data from the api so you can try this out what i will do is i will take a different api so that you know we can we can get acquainted with that i'm just reducing the size so everything is visible here so what we will do we'll just take a api request from a different website so here if you see we take test api for http so here you can get a lot of uh, websites we, you can take any one of them i'm taking this one so here it gives you this api and when you try running this api you get this kind of a result 
So this is the result that you get here. Okay. So let's let's add just add some parameters here. So let's call this parameter test, and uh, the answer that I want it will be one two three so one two three a b c. So this is what I am getting, and when I send a request for this parameter, this is what I will be getting, and the URL will be now changed to this. So if I just copy this, and instead of this now, if I put this here. So here you can see I'm getting args test and I'm getting this parameter, right? So we are going to design a, a chain link contract in Solidity. We'll write a Solidity smart contract using the chain link API, where we are getting this kind of a uh, a response, and from that we'll be extracting this data. So we can use the same smart contract that they have given, but I'll show you what changes you have to make accordingly. So you can just copy this and let's head into the Remix IDE. Remix IDE. Another thing, please remember, uh, this is going to run on the Sepolia network right now. So we'll be using the test network Sepolia. So I have my MetaMask and my MetaMask is connected to Sepolia. Let's just open it. So you can see it's connected to Sepolia. Another thing is you will also need some chain link tokens to run the smart contract. So whenever these smart contracts are executing, you need some chain link tokens so that they can send a request and get the same. So here you can see I have some assets of chain link which we will transfer to the uh, smart contract that we build. So let's uh, create. Uh, I'm creating a new workspace called chain link test so here i've created this new workspace these files are given by default i'll create a new uh, folder my test contracts and in this folder i'll create a new solidity file which will be my test dot so so this is a file that I've created. I'll simply paste in uh, the contract that we copied from the Chainlink website. Now this generally gives you this kind of an uh, alert. Why? Because sometimes what happens is that you copy paste someone's smart contract. It may have bugs. It may have uh, some backdoors wherein they can take in the money that you send in. Now for us, this is entirely testing purpose. We are not going to use any real money, real tokens here, but any contracts you copy from the net please take care of them so let's just close it so here this is the same chain link contract now we'll be changing a few things here okay I'll, I'll show what all i'll be changing here so all of this is perfectly fine we're not going to touch here but we'll be changing the job id now this is basically the chain link token address so if you copy this and if you just go to ether scan the and you place this this is the address for uh, chain link tokens here i think this is for sepolia so here you can see this is a contract address for chain link token so this is test chain link token address so the first parameter is you need to set the chain link token and this will vary based on the network that you're using sepolia this is the case this is the address that they have specified for other networks you will have to change it the chain link oracle address also this is what uh, oracle is running for chain link so this oracle helps you communicate to the api so all of these details can be found here on the chain link website so you can get these job ids by clicking on existing job and here uh, find a job it's not showing here yeah so here testnet oracles are there so here for sepolia this is the address right so you can see 6090 this is what we have here 6090 9 efd and here 
9 EFB. If you are using Goyereli network, you use this. Any other networks, you use the respective oracles. And the last thing that we will change is the job ID. Now, what exactly is the job ID? This is the job ID. Job ID is basically nothing but, in a way, it is uh, telling chaining what type of data do you require what are you extracting out of the url so for us this is of the type string this data that is coming in is of the type string so what we are going to do is this job id is for integer type of a data so if you see here they are getting this data which is of the type int so if you see uh, the data that we are getting is volume so for now they are extracting volume which is of the type int but for our case this is of the type string so we need a job id which gets string okay so if you see gets int uh, un254 is this and int 256 is this sorry that was also un256 so this is i think the current job id if you see fcf4 so if we go to the job id no this is not fcf4 ca938 yeah ca938 it is unsigned integer it's it's this one which is giving us an unsigned integer but for us we are getting a string value so for us the job id is going to be for get method string so we'll take this we'll copy this we'll go here and we'll change this secondly the data that you're getting that also has to be changed right now this is classified as string and the name of the data is volume so here we'll call our parameter as test and it is supposed to be of the type string so i'll simply change this i'll say this is string and this is test now uh, we'll just search for wherever volume was used and we'll just replace it with test so here volume was being used i'll say test here also underscore test here test and here we will say this is of the type string it will need memory and here we will call it underscore test so here all of these errors are gone one small thing we will still be giving an error this because here we are trying to emit uh, an event which gives a request id and a parameter test but if you look at the top here we have declared this using un256 so we'll just change it to string and here we'll call it uh, first we'll use memory and here we'll say test so i think we are good to go i think your memory is not required I believe. yeah works fine so here we are ready with everything just two things now we need to change firstly this is not going to be the path okay so i'll just delete this and this is not the url that we'll be using so i'll remove this as well so the url that we'll be using is going to be this this is the url so i'll just copy this and we'll paste it here like this so this is our url and the path that we want this will not be the path so the path is going to be it's going to be args comma test okay <coughs> so it's simply going to be args comma test just double check once that this has to be in the same order and the name of the uh, parameters has to be perfect so ARGS TEST T capital ARGS TEST T capital so you can compare it here with the original smart contract that was there wherein they had given the path like this here so here you can see raw ETH USD and then this so they are given raw comma ETH comma USD 24 hours so this is exactly what our case is so we have given the path the other thing is that we don't need now this multiplication so earlier they were multiplying because it it was giving us a decimal value in return so for our case we don't need all of 
we don't need this we need the path but we don't need this so I think we are good to go and uh, we will not be writing a getter because this is already a test uh, it, this variable test is already public so we are getting a getter by default so I'm not writing a getter so here you can see it has compiled without any issues let's go to deploy as I told you we will be deploying on the Sepolia network so here I'm using metamask Sepolia I'll say deploy metamask will pop out for confirmation let's just wait for that here I'll say commit so I confirmed that here we can see our contract is created and if you want to see on etherscan you can just click here and you'll be able to see that here transaction was confirmed and this is our contract okay it has these functions right now if you see the owner it's giving me this as the owner that is correct that is my address in metamask you can double check it again here 626b8fa so here you can see 626b8fa so everything is working fine if i look at the value of the test variable for now it is not having any value it's empty basically right now uh, if you try sending the request directly if you try getting the data directly right now it will give you error because it needs chain tokens so you are you will see it's popping up an error so it's calculating the gas fee and the chain tokens are required so what we'll do we'll just copy this address we'll copy this address and we'll say send and we'll paste this address so seven zero and we are going to send some link tokens here i'll be sending 0 0.1 because i'll be just using that much balance so 0 0.1 link but if you are going to use it multiple number of times please make sure you give them uh, give the smart contract more link so i've sent in the request i've confirmed it the link token should show up here in the account balance let's wait for a few seconds here you can see the link tokens have arrived all right now i think it will not give an error when we run it so again the string right now is empty now let's run request volume now no error our metamask will directly pop up for confirmation some gas fee is required we will go ahead we will say confirm it's going to confirm now let's just wait for a few seconds here here you can see it has confirmed okay everything has gone fine now if we test this we should get some value till the time the smart contract is fetching us the value please like share the video and please subscribe to the channel if it gave any value to you here the value is here sometimes it takes time to reflect though so that's why it didn't pop up in the first twice when i clicked on it but here you can see now the value has been imported so in this way you can connect with any api and you can get whatever values that you have so this was just a single value again you can use this to get multiple variables from different urls you can get array of responses from a single url like this so you can just check it out and if you have any doubts any queries please leave leave it down in the comment i am also going to be coming up soon with a complete course for a full stack app development on blockchain with the front end and the back end so stay tuned for that and please subscribe uh, to the channel so that you get the notifications thanks